Leplet recently launched a new game jam called Kajam, where you have to make a game in one week or less, and the winner gets ten thousand dollars. And I also wanted to try out Leplet's game library called Kaboom JS. And um, what better way to try it out than to participate in Kajam? This is how I created Swirl.io for the Kajam. I got the idea for Swirl.io by looking at one of my past Clack projects. It was also called Swirl.io and it was basically two people fighting. I wanted to make this game in JavaScript and actually make it multiplayer so you could play with real people and not an AI bot. First, I made images for the player and sword. Then, I started creating the client in Kaboom.js. Kaboom.js was super easy to use, but I found out that it lacked a few basic features, since the library was still in development. Once I thought the client was good enough, I got to work on the server side. This was actually fairly easy for me, since I had uh, a lot of experience with Socket.io. So, um, in about a few days, I got together my uh, Socket.io server, and I was able to get the client connected to it. Next, I got the client to handle packets sent by the server. This was probably the easiest part in making this game, and I did it in about a day, and at this point, I had basic multiplayer. So if I moved, everyone else in the game could see that, and if they moved, I could see that too. One day, me and my friends decided to test out my game, and um, I saw a pretty big problem with it. The movements were really glitchy. There also were other like smaller issues, like if you resize the game, it would um, make a scroll bar at the bottom of the screen and even if uh, you fix the resize, the, the swirl movements would be like completely broken. I had no clue how to fix these small issues because the documentation wasn't helpful and there weren't really any helpful tutorials on it. So this left me with only one logical solution to switch game libraries. I looked at many other options and finally settled on Phaser 3. Phaser 3 was fairly new and it had all the components that I needed. So I decided to rewrite my client using Phaser. Rewriting the client in Phaser wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. It was fairly easy and I was able to get a cool background that moved as I walked, and this simulated a walking effect even though the player was actually just in the center of the screen. And uh, debugging on the game was really hard because um, I do most of my development at school on my school Chromebook, and uh, for some reason they decided to ban the developer console on it. This meant that whenever I had an error in my code, I couldn't just open the console up to see it. I eventually did figure a way around this with the window.onerror handler. So after a while, um, the relay was basically done, and me and my friends decided to test it again. And this time, the game was way better. The resizing didn't break the game, and um, there were still some movement issues, but it wasn't too bad, and I decided to fix it later. So. The last thing I had to do was add collisions. Phaser did have built-in collision support, but I realized that doing using this was not a good idea because this was a multiplayer game and um, if I did the collisions in the client side, anyone can create hacks for my game. So I had to move all the collisions to the server side. This meant that I had to do some manual calculating and I can't just use um, the phasers built-in collision module. I decided to do a line circle collision. So basically the line would be the sword and the circle would be the player who I'm checking for. So this way I can check if the line is touching the circle 
And if it is, I will send some damage. I quickly tested the collision with two tabs, and somehow it worked. I found out that it wasn't 100% perfect, but it wasn't good enough. So there was only two days left in Tegram, so I had to speed things up. I added a health bar, I added a home screen and a you died screen, and um, I did like a lot more bug fixes and all that. There was another big problem, bot spammers. People figured out how to add bots to my game, and uh, people realized that if they added hundreds of thousands of bots, they could crash the server and um, I had to manually restart it. At first, this was a small problem, but it eventually grew into a big one. People had the bot spammers turned on all night, so um, the server would instantly crash right when I turned it back on. Eventually, I added recapture. Basically, what it does is that whenever a pl player joins in my game, it will give them a score of 0 to 1. If the score is too low, I would kick them and they can't join again. This was able to stop the bot. Now, the game was mostly done. I only had a few things to do, but I still felt like I missed something. Now, the theme for Kajam was huge. But my game had nothing to do with huge. It was basically a game where you fight people with swords. I wanted to somehow include the theme in my game. I thought about this and I realized that the best way to do this was to add coins. Basically, people can collect coins and that would make them big. The goal of the game would be to get huge. I also made it so that if you kill someone, they will drop all their coins and you can go collect them. This made the game a lot more fun, and now the game actually has a point. And then, it was the final day of Kajam. All I did on this day was just add some sound effects, add a mini-map, which was actually really useful, and I also did some basic bug fixes. And I submitted the game on Replit apps, and I also made a post on Replit um, about the game. I also got the CEO of Replit to comment on my game, um, that was really cool, and uh, my game got on trending, both on Replit apps, and my post also got on trending. I was never expecting this game to get this much uh, people playing it, so thank you for that. So that concludes this video, uh, you can go play the game on Replit, I'll also leave a link to it in the description, and they haven't announced the results of Kajam yet. But when they do, I'll let you know on that soon. And thanks for watching this video on how I made Spell.io. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. And goodbye.